What's up guys, Flannel Fox, Tim Swernick here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About Games. Today we're gonna to be talking about Away Journey to the Unexpected, which launches tomorrow on the Nintendo Switch. So let's set the stage. First person game with roguelite elements and some exploration. You play as a youngster, a kid, and it feels like it. This game also feels like it's more made for a kid, which we'll touch on some more. Um, but you, your parents work for the government in their way, and your grandparents are watching you, and there is an explosion, and your wall is broken open. Um, so then you go to sort of explore what's going on, and you meet Labby Corp, which is a corporation that is just sort of destroying the Earth. So more fun ensues, um, and I, I was really excited about this game. Not so much now, and we'll get into reasons, things that I like and things that I don't like about this game as I sort of show you um, some gameplay. So let's let's jump in. Right off the rip, and this goes throughout the game, this is a really great looking game. Um, the environments are really fleshed out. They feel like, look at how nice and warm and vibrant this room feels. Like, it does feel cozy. You got some nice little animation going on there. It's it's just feels very nice, which is great for the aesthetic. Now, when you're talking about the aesthetic, yes, everything is 3D. It's really nice, fleshed out 3D, but then you get to the characters, which are 2D sprites. It's a, I'm not sure how I feel about it. it sort of the way that like a first person shooter like Doom back in the day where they had sprites mapped to it. And you'll see what I'm talking about here with these little slimes. They're just 2D sprites for all of your enemies. And this is first person combat. For the, that's like your main mechanic in the game. So this is Pines Valley. This is the first area that you'll go into complete. You can see this gate is opening because I've already completed this level. Um, but how this works is there are three sort of micro dungeons and these dungeons you have to complete three of them and once you complete all three it unlocks the boss dungeon so and you'll have the same sort of thing objectively for each level and these are where the roguelike elements come in because each dungeon if you die and come back they're different so you don't know the layout which is actually pretty fun um i'm gonna get this uh cube now this cube allows you to meet a friend or get another uh power so that's one of the main mechanics of the game is that you'll learn other powers and like sort of, it's not just learning a power, you're, I guess you're putting a friend in that cube and then playing as them. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna pop over here and grab this dude. It's crazy tree, which some of the sprites, like this guy reminds me of Cuphead a little bit. Looks really nice. And I've already um, teamed up with him. I had to sort of navigate a conversation to get him. So now I can, play in as this guy or play as myself. Now, switching between them, the world is still going on at real time. It's not pausing while you go through this. So if you switch during battle, you're just in a transition in real time while you're getting attacked. So that's something to be weary of um, as you're doing it. And like I said, when we were still in the house, the, room, the environments still look really nice. Um, like it's obviously stylized like very strongly, but they look really good. The 2D sprites are very well um, drawn out and designed. It is a goofy little contrast because you, I feel like I would like to see these characters in 3D in this world. And a big issue that I do have with the sprites is that I feel like it messes up your hit detection. And when you're in the main of the game, the hits, and this is the my biggest gripe with this game. And this is the reason that I'm not gonna keep playing this game because I was really excited for this game and the fact that it aesthetically and the way that the story kind of talks to you and treats you, like it is definitely um, designed more for children, which is totally fine because it's great to, it'll be a great game to introduce a youngster to some some roguelike gameplay. But um, my main beef with this game is how the first person combat feels, which is really bad. So it has a really weird hit detection. Maybe it's because these are 2D sprites and it's a 3D environment and it's not like uh, FPS where you're shooting the 2D sprites. It's 
first person combat, but it's melee combat. So you're hitting a 2D sprite and it feels like they should be closer to you when you, the, it feels like they should be closer to you when they're at the point when you can actually hit them. They're actually kind of further away when they're in the area where they can be hit. And I know it sounds weird and I'll show you, but when they get to a spot where it feels like any other first person melee combat game, they damage you and they're too close for you to attack them. The, the sweet spot is this goofy place that's just a little too far. And it really, really, really ruins the experience for me. Um, that being said, this is your melee combat with as yourself. And then when you go to the next character, you can see that you have a different ability and you shoot out this little uh, seed and then it makes these flying bombs. And then the characters run into these bombs and blow up. It's a really good weapon actually. Um, so I have made it past the first level, but all that does is when you go back into it, it allows you to skip going through the first three dungeons, but I still have to play the boss. So I'll show you some of the combat in this boss dungeon and we'll check it out. All right, now we'll see the, the Labby Works dungeon. So these little triangles are just currency and I have a ton of them. You can just use it to, if you're going between dungeons, you can refill your health, um, with which also is tied to your energy if you use up all the powers from your secondary um, sort of characters there. So, the dungeons look really good. The atmospheric lighting is really nice. Um, there's some pretty decent platforming too. So we're gonna have to dodge these saw blades. Ah! Speed up. The, um, all right, I'm gonna use this tool actually because this dude is like doing some wild shit. We just blew him up there. Let that bomb blow up. All right, now we have these little slimes, little, and I'll show you the combat. See, it's really hard and feels really bad while you're doing it. I've sort of gotten it the, the hang down, but Essentially, when you think that they're just out of range, then you hit them and you're perfectly in range. And if they get close enough to you where it feels natural, they'll damage you. And it just doesn't feel good at all. Like here's where I feel like you should go and be able to hit them, but they damage you if you let them get too close. And it really sucks because it just throws off the natural feel. I feel like if you played this game for three hours and then went and played Skyrim, or um, and just any other first person melee combat game, you'd be thrown off because you're so used to this janky system that just doesn't feel right, which is so weird because the rest of the game looks incredibly polished, but it's just that first person combat that feels so unnatural. And it really just feels like a huge mess up on their end because other than that, the game feels good, but that is such a big deal, especially to me that, I don't know, it, it's sort of a deal breaker for me. Like, I'm not gonna play a first person combat game where the combat doesn't feel great. See, look at that, like, there's just no connection between the weapon and the sprite. So I'm gonna try to see beyond that real quick. And uh, I'll talk about some other aspects of the game. Um, I've had, so along with the, I've actually been in this boss dungeon before, I guess, because it's the boss that I've beaten, maybe. They um, they repeated it, but we'll see when I get to the actual boss. So we're gonna go in here, there's some more little slimes. Oh. Hopefully we can get some hearts. I'm gonna try to save my energy in with my second character for the boss. Whoop. Ah, no hearts. That sucks. But I already have the boss key, so we can jump in here. The boss fights are okay. The mechanics don't feel polished in that sense. 
I guess that's my overall theme of this. Aesthetically, it's great, but the mechanics, the gameplay don't feel good. Yeah, so I've already played this boss and essentially you have to hit the bombs up to these little treads on the wall and then they'll go up and blow up the spider. So I found out that hitting them isn't the best way to do it because it's pretty off. The best way to do it is just run into them by sprinting. You can blow up the spider that way. Yeah, there are just a lot of, I don't know, it feels disconnected. Like the, the mechanics just aren't quite there. The mechanics and the way that they work together, I would say. Stinks, because I really wanted to like this game. I love me some roguelites. I, I would say this is literally baby's first roguelite. Yeah, okay, we finally got him down, which took forever, which is ridiculous. Because I feel like I was hitting him with bombs time and time again. So now we're gonna get him with, oh, get him with these seeds. And we'll kill him super easily. Whoop. And he's dead. Let that blow up, get some heart. Get some grenades, which they're fireworks. They're not even grenades. It is very kid friendly. And uh, continue to the next stage. So my thoughts on this game which you already know because I've reiterated it like five times, but I went to, so we're moving on to the next area. So honestly, I'm gonna say that I can't recommend this game because of the way that it feels and the mechanics. Like while the world is aesthetically polished, the mechanics are incredibly not, and it makes it so it feels like you're being cheated when you get hit because the mechanics are just off. And if you were to play, you know exactly what I mean, the hit, fields and detection are just not right. Hopefully they they try to patch it out or something, um, but it's just not there yet, which sucks because I feel like this game does have a lot of potential, but I can't recommend it. It's $16.99, which the price doesn't matter when something has the core mechanics off so much. Um, I've put in about three and a half hours now and I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna keep going with this game, even though there are some cool aspects to it, like changing characters and getting new characters and getting their weapons. Um, but it's just not for me. Let me know if you do get this game, um, and I'd love to hear your feedback because there are certain aspects of this game that could appeal to other people, but I'm big on gameplay, and the gameplay for me is a big thumbs down. Um, I'm the Flannel Fox, Tim Swernick. Please follow me on Twitter. I'm really working on my Twitter following. Follow me on Instagram at the Flannel Fox Gamer. If you like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, please nominate me for Kinda Funny's Up and Comer at www.com slash uh, slash up and comer. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, see you next time, Switchers.